So I thought I'd point out some details of the difficulties and the exceptions in remodeling. One of the things is when you have to relocate a drain in a cabinet or in an area where they're using the drain currently. This is something that you don't have to do in new construction. But we're going to need to relocate that drain to somewhere right around here. Isn't that nice? We want to relocate that drain to here, so we've already got it coming up in the foundation. But you know what the problem would be? They can't use the kitchen sink if we, if we tie into it. So we had to reroute the kitchen sink to come back into the new drain location. And we had to do that below the slab so that it would actually continue to flow water, so that it would be actually draining. You can hook up pipes all you want, but if it isn't below level, then it's not going to flow. So that's what we did here. Now once we get this poured, the foundation comes in, client's still able to use this. The whole time that we're building the walls, we're enclosing it, insulating it, sheetrocking it, and when we put the cabinets in and we hook up the sink, we'll cut this off temporarily, put the cabinets in. We might even make a hole for a little bit longer, but normally at that point, right around that point, we're doing the demolition of that existing kitchen. And that's okay then because it's normal schedule. You're not interrupting the client's life for longer than necessary. That's just a little detail. Another little detail I wanted to show you all was having to do with the way that we tie in foundations. There are several points I want to make and you'll have to come over here and, uh, and get some close-ups. But one of them is you're noticing that these, these bars here are coming and crossing. It's not so much important that they cross each other. What's really important is that they are on an angle. And you'll notice a little black gray matter coming out of the holes. That black matter is, is solidified epoxy. Can you see that? And you'll do, get a little close up of it. But that is meaning two things. One is they can't come out. All of these bars have ridges on them. And by the way, all of these ridges are so that concrete grabs and doesn't slide on these bars. Believe it or not, if concrete doesn't have ridges in it, it can actually slide over the, over the steel. We don't want that. And on the angle, it means that these slabs cannot pull away even more so because they're angled and the more that they, they put pressure, the more it's going against that angle. It's binding, if you will, against the steel and against the house. So those are some of the methods that we use to ensure that our slabs do not pull away. And I know we've all probably seen slabs that were pulling away and getting a gap. So there's two reasons why that happens. One is, is how well you supported it out here with the beams and doing them right. Of course, we get a structural engineer, even in areas where we don't have inspections like this project, we still get a structural engineer to verify that it is built correctly and will not be going up and down. The second reason is, is they don't bind them to and lock them into the slab. So even if this were theoretically were to lose all the support under it, it could still hold itself in tight to the slab because of that binding and locking in effect of these. And it could actually hold up concrete. So it's a double insurity that it won't, that it won't settle and start pulling away from the house. Now, that's how you do it in the field. We call all of this steel that I'm sitting on, we call it, which by the way is not very comfortable, it's, it's called field steel, and the field is a 3 8 to half inch rebar placed at 12 inch or 16 inches on center, going both ways. That's your field steel. Now your beam steel, you have these bigger ones, and they're dialed in there also. They're dialed into the existing beam, and they are supposed to be uh, matching up real closely with what the steel is in the existing beam on the home. The beam goes around the perimeter, and we're tapping into that. So all of these beams are tapping into the exterior beam of the home. And that's how you keep a slab in place.